I'm Doug Hershey, author of Israel Rising and the Christian's Biblical Guide to Understanding Israel. Here I am at the Aliyah Return Center in the Jordan Valley, right beside the Jordan River. And I want to talk to you a little bit about the word shalom and how that applies to not only our lives, but in terms of a place of prayer and how God uses that in our lives. The word shalom in Hebrew is more than just simply an outward absence of conflict. We often think of the word peace in more of a, a general modern day term, meaning that there's no, there's no conflict or there's no fighting. But in Hebrew, it actually means something much different. It means a much deeper sense of fullness, of completeness, of well-being, and of rest. And so when the Bible is talking about shalom, it's not just simply saying, be uh, at, at peace with your enemies, like there, there's no conflict. It's, there's actually a much richer blessing. So here in Israel, when we say hello or say goodbye, we're saying shalom. So it's more than just hey, you know, like the peace sign, it's been more of like, may God's blessing of peace be within you is what's being communicated. So with that understanding, I want to walk through a few significant scriptures. Actually, I'm going to use a little portion of the Christian's biblical guide to understanding Israel. Uh, but in number six, one of the most profound blessings referred to as the Aaronic benediction that's given right before the sons of Israel come into the promised land. It says, speak to Aaron and to his sons, Thus you'll say to bless the sons of Israel, and you'll say to them, May the Lord bless you and keep you, and may His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May He lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace, give you shalom. Now, what's fascinating about this is that the word shalom, it means this inner fullness and inner completeness. And the context of this blessing is given to the sons of Israel right before they're going to take the promised land. So they were going into a, a setting that was going to be basically warfare, and yet God was saying, may God's face shine upon you and give you peace. Meaning, even though that you're walking into this realm of outward conflict, where there's going to be war and chaos at times, may God always give you this inner sense of completeness. God is wanting you to walk in His shalom. Not just simply an outward aspect of, of uh, the absence of conflict, but this inner completeness, this inner fullness without lacking anything. May His face shine upon you and give you this sense of wellness, of completeness, and of rest. And so when we're talking about prayer, there's something that's really interesting that Yeshua talks about at the very end of Matthew chapter 9. And it's a popular verse that says that, look to the harvest fields and pray that the Lord will send workers into His harvest. And that's the end of chapter 9 and it begins chapter 10. And we usually stop reading there. But if you, we continue, if you take your pen and scratch that little phrase out in, in your Bible that says chapter 10, cross that out and continue reading, the thought doesn't end there. He says, pray or beseech the Lord of the harvest to send workers out into the harvest field. And the very next thing you see in Matthew 10 is that he is appointing the disciples to go into the harvest field. In other words, what he's often doing when he's asking you and I to pray, to pray for Israel, to pray for the things that are going on in the earth, or to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, he's not saying, I want you to pray so that maybe I will do something. I'll step off of my throne in heaven and go do something. He's saying, I want your hearts to be prepared so that you and I can work together to change the things in the earth. So when we're praying, just in general, when, when we're praying about things, God will often lay things on our hearts about prayer, about things that we're to pray for, not because he wants us to ask Him to change it, but He's wanting our hearts to join with Him to take the motivation to be ready to be feet to our own prayers. So when the Bible talks about pray for the peace of Jerusalem, we're praying not just simply that God will get off His holy throne and come to Jerusalem and fix everything. He's getting our hearts ready to be involved in the city that He loves, the city that He is going to rule and reign the earth from, and the city that He has called home. He wants you to be there in the city with Him, and He's saying, I want you to pray for the fullness and the completeness and the whole well-being of the city of Jerusalem the way that I already see that. And so when you're praying for the peace of Jerusalem, you yourself are getting ready to be a part of what is going to be happening as Jerusalem being the center and the fullness of all God wants to do in the earth. You're praying for the fullness, for the rest, for the total completeness, not lacking anything of that city of Jerusalem, that everything that God intends for the city of Jerusalem would happen. One of the most profound ways that that's going to happen is by the Prince of Peace 
coming to rule and reign. So again, when we're talking about Yeshua being the Prince of Peace, or even the prophecy in Isaiah 9, 6, when it says that he will be called the Prince of Peace in Hebrew, Sar Shalom, it's saying he will be the Prince, he will be the Chief, he will be the, the Prince of Shalom, he will be the Prince of fullness and rest and of completeness, not lacking anything. Can you imagine the time that's soon coming when the, when the Prince of fullness, when the King of righteousness, the king of having everything all together, not lacking anything, is ruling from the city of Shalom. And he's telling us, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, pray for the Prince of Peace to come to the city of Jerusalem, not because he's going to do it, but because he wants you to be involved with it as well. Moving on, as Yeshua is teaching in Matthew 5, <clears throat> he also says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are the shalom makers. Blessed are the ones who are bringing a sense of completeness, a sense of fullness, because they will be called the sons of God. Yeshua is the son of God. So you are fellow heirs with Christ. You are a part of the inheritance. We are working with God for all of his purposes in the earth. And so when God is saying, blessed are the peacemakers, it's not just simply blessed are those that are negotiating peace among nations. It's blessed are those that are bringing a fullness, a completeness, and this well-rounded aspect of not lacking anything in God. Blessed are those that are bringing that shalom to others and giving that to others, imparting that to others, because they will be called the sons of God. You will be called, you would be just like Yeshua when you have so much shalom in your heart, so much fullness and completeness that you're giving it away that's just oozing out of your pores. As we're getting ready, as the world is focusing more and more on Jerusalem. Jerusalem in Ezekiel 5, 5, Jerusalem, it says God has placed Jerusalem in the center of the earth. His intention for the city of Jerusalem is to be this place of peace. Peace is to be reigning central throughout the earth. Peace is to be the main core of this, of this wholeness, of this completeness. It's where the the Prince of Peace, the Prince of Wholeness and Completeness will be ruling from, and he wants that to be the very center of the earth. He wants you to be with him. So when we talk about praying for the peace of Jerusalem, this goes far beyond any type of political conflict that's going on. This is talking about what God desires for you to be involved in changing the earth on a very ground level. This is not about asking God to come down and to do something miraculous. He's saying, pray that your own heart will be changed, will be full of this fullness, so that you will be the change that you're praying for. For the things that you're praying for, God is ready for you to be the feet to your prayers. So here we are at the Jordan River. The river that Israel crossed over into to take the land is now not the time to continue to walk into the things that God has called you to, that has called us to here in the Jordan Valley, here at the Aliyah Return Center, for here of all of Israel. So when God is asking us to pray for Israel, pray for the things that are happening in Israel, he's not saying, pray that I will come down and change things. He's saying, join me in this work. I am placing Israel, I'm placing Jerusalem in the center of the world. With my work with Israel Rising and some future photo book projects that I have coming up, you will see that a hundred years ago nobody cared about Jerusalem. Nobody cared about this land. The fact that this land here has got flowers and there's farming behind me and the, there's life going on a hundred years ago, it looked nothing like this for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years prior. But the fact that it's being restored just to the way the prophets had said is evidence that he has a plan for this land. He's in planning for you to be a part of it. And most significantly, he's planning for the peace of God to reign in your hearts, to walk with God, to be a part of bringing his shalom to this nation. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem, pray for Israel, and pray for all that God intends in your life and in mine to be working with him to bring shalom to the earth. Blessings to you from the Galilee, and we'll talk to you soon.